Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. The ministry of the Holy Ghost to man and first to the unbeliever is called the convicting ministry of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, nobody will repent. Without the Holy Ghost, nobody will be convicted of sin. Listen, people don't repent because you preach a powerful message. You are joking. If the Holy Ghost does not work on their heart, when you are done preaching, they'll say, wow, that's intelligent. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Well done. Well done. Well done. They will even tap you at the back to encourage you. When you preach, the reason people are convicted is because the Holy Ghost works on their heart. This is why for those of us who are trusting God to win the world, we must cooperate with the Holy Ghost. We must not build our confidence in our natural abilities. Many preachers think the reason they are powerful is because they are of their oratorial dexterity. And you'll find, see, oratory is good. Queen's English is good. Upgrade yourself as much as possible. But never make the mistake of building your confidence there. Nobody will listen to you because you talk well. Nobody will listen to you and be convicted because you are, you are a skilled speaker. All of that is secondary. The primary power that convicts the souls of men is the power of the Holy Spirit. The reason men repent after they are convicted and turn to the Lord is because of the Holy Ghost. This is why Jesus told his disciples, disciples don't go out because you are my disciples. Before you start running everywhere and say, ah, didn't you see me in Galilee? I, I came with him the day that uh, the cripple walked. <laughs> he will be joking. You know, this is a generation where you just snap picture with a general overseer. You put it on your Facebook. You have become a national prophet. You are joking. If you like, they should validate you in a stadium where 50,000 people are. It will not add anything to you. Nothing. I'm telling you, I've been here for a while. Honor men as much as you can. It's a beautiful thing to do in the kingdom. Men should be honored, especially those who labor in the world and doctrine. But don't build your confidence on politics, human politics. There are many people who have been in church for 15 years, 20 years. They amounted to nothing. General Overseer loved them. They became favorites. They amounted to nothing. I told you people before, if this thing is about your closeness to a man, the wives of men of God or their children will be the most anointed. But many times, you will discover that it's the degree to which you plunge into God that determines what comes out of your life. God can use men to impart you. There's no denying it. But this is not politics. What convicts the heart of men is the power of the Holy Spirit. This is why we trust him. This is why we engage him. We pray. We interact with him before we go out to preach. Because he's the one who walks in the heart of men. We talk to their minds. He talks to their heart. And it is what happened to the hearts of men that changes them. So the ministry of the Holy Ghost to man is first of all the convicting ministry. And there are two dimensions to conviction. Number one is to reprove. John 16 verse 8, to reprove. He said, and when he is come, he will reprove the word of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He's the one that tells the fornicator that what you have done is evil. And if you don't repent, you will be judged. So when you are preaching and somebody is weeping, something is happening to his heart beyond what you are saying. The one who reproves is going to walk. Acts 2 37, after Peter was done preaching, the Bible said they were pricked in their hearts and said, men and brethren, what shall we do? What do you think happened? That pricking is the Holy Ghost walking. You need to know that it was not about what he said. It was about the fire in the upper room. So before he went out, he said when the day of Pentecost was fully come, he said they were together in one accord and they heard the sound as of a rushing mighty wing and suddenly, hey, Lakoa, the governor showed up and he didn't come quiet. He came first of all with a shout and when he appeared, cloven tongues because the fire is to reveal to you what will start happening. It was that rage they went out with and so they were talking. A furnace was going for a furnace burning the hearts of men regardless of who they were. See, when you are preaching you'll be shocked. Sometimes you make mistakes. I was preaching somewhere and I was talking about the Zoe life. I didn't know when I migrated from Zoe and started calling Bios. I preached all through thinking I was talking Zoe, Zoe. When they now showed me the message, I was saying bios, bios. I said, what, what happened to my brain? What, what, what am I saying? This is a deal. I, 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 I put down the message. Before I said that, thousands were already repenting. I now discovered it's good to be theologically correct, but the power that convicts is not theology. The power that convicts is the spirit. 
That's why today, many people pride themselves in knowledge. Everything that has been preached before, they come and say, you were deceived, this was wrong, this was wrong. Oh God, since you started preaching this, your gospel, how many people have been saved? You are telling people who triggered national revival that they were wrong because salvation is soteria and sozo. And because they didn't explain soteria well, how many people have been saved with what you are saying? Because what you are saying originates from your brain. I'm not saying correct theology is not right, but we, we don't judge the potency of your ministry just by the intellectual aspect. Thank God for the intellectual aspect and all of us should have it. But if your pride anchors on the intellectual aspect, you don't know the work of God. This is why a man can come and say, in the name of Jesus went out. It doesn't matter. The demon will go. Another person can come and say, by the forces of Exusia, by the mystery of Yeshua, Hamashiach, come out. The demon will slap you. So we have a generation puffed up with knowledge. Every message of theirs you see, they are correcting all the teachers. This thing you said is wrong. It's because of this. Look at this scripture. And when you hear it, it's arrogance. It's pride. It's competition. It's bitterness. So the character of Christ is not even there. I know there are times when the spirit can move you judgmentally. It happens to me once in a while. I went to a nation somewhere and I judged the prophet. But it's not a lifestyle. I'd rather teach people Christ for them to grow. Ministry is not about saying who is right or wrong or what is right or wrong. At the level of a teacher, we can do it. But even if we do it, it must be in love. It must be seasoned with grace so that those who hear us will be edified. The reason we hear and fight originate is because the witness of the Spirit is not there. And that's why after all our argument, there's no revival. But there's a man called Jonathan Edwards. He stood somewhere and read a message. He didn't preach it. He read it. And when he read it, a whole city went on fire with revival. A whole city by reading a message. A man was called Charles Finney. He showed up. My goodness. When he was done preaching, people wept for months. Their palace shut down. He didn't tell them to stop. The fire that came out of his soul was too intense for the culture to remain the way it was. We don't know the Holy Ghost. We are full of theological knowledge and he has puffed our minds. And that's why we argue and all we are doing is to have views online. And when secondary school students who are not mature in God come to like, we think we are making impact. There's nothing wrong in establishing the right doctrine, but the truth must be spoken in love. The truth must be seasoned with grace. Truth must be communicated with meekness and the spirit of brokenness. It must be communicated from the standpoint of the burdens of the spirit. And when we get it right, the proof that we are right is that a generation will be convicted. Every time there was revival, men came with the rod of judgment. But you could see the finger of God. But you see, the Holy Ghost is the one who convicts. The Holy Ghost is the one who provokes repentance from the heart of men. And so please, don't build your ministry on your intellectual capacity. Don't build your ministry on your oratorial power. Build your ministry on your intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Because if it doesn't touch the heart of men, at best, they will become your fans. They will clap and be excited at your intelligence. But the criminal will remain a criminal. The drunk will remain a drunk. The false prophet will remain a false prophet. The proud apostle will remain a proud apostle. The liar will remain a liar. And nothing will change in their lives. It convicts. And its conviction is reproof and repentance. In fact, Men will not see their depravity except as the Holy Ghost shows them. Ask yourself now if you want to go and preach to Elon Musk or you want to preach to Mark Zuckerberg, which message will you preach? Of course, you know God will bless you, it's not inside. You know that one. You know, ah, you need to break cover all altars. You know that one is not there. You know already. So, some of us here, 99% of our messages already is off. The only thing you can tell him is Jesus is the son of God. He loves you and he died for your sins. Believe in him and have eternal life. That's the weak message you will preach. But what will make that message powerful is that beyond what you have said, the Holy Ghost will enter his heart. He will enter his heart. And so most of the things we do is because we don't trust the Holy Ghost. And we don't trust him because we don't know him. It's easy when you meet illiterates to start talking some deep things. 
When you meet young people, to start talking some emotional things. When you meet poor people, to start talking about some promises. When you meet a man who is established and does not need God, you will need the Holy Ghost. The second ministry of the Holy Ghost, which is his first to the believer, is the transformational ministry. After you have been convicted and after you have repented, you will need to transform and become like Christ. Otherwise, you will fall again. So when the Holy Ghost convicts you and causes you to repent, he doesn't stop. He now begins the job of transformation. And transformation has five layers. The first layer of transformation is awakening to the life of God. When a man repents, the Holy Ghost will now quicken in him to become aware that he possesses another life. You know, Ephesians 5.14 said, Awake, awake. Thou that sleepest, Christ will give thee light. So there is a light we must come into to know that we now have the life of God. 1 Corinthians 2.14, see the way the Bible puts it. There's another economy of life entirely that is in God. But if the Holy Ghost does not quicken you, you will never know it. You will depend on the life that ATP produces, which is in your blood. And you will be weak. He said, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. So what the Holy Ghost will do is that he will quicken you from the frequency of the natural man. So that you become aware of the life of God that is in you. Romans chapter 6 from verse 4 to verse 5. See the way the Bible puts it. It says we are buried with him in baptism into death. That as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. is the Holy Ghost that brought Christ into the new realm of life. It says you also should walk in the newness of life. There are many people who are born again, but they are not walking in the power of eternal life. They are not walking in the realm of the resurrected life. The life that knows no defeat. The first thing the Holy Ghost will do is to give you the consciousness that you are no longer in the realm of death. That you have been brought into the realm of victory. This is why you will notice suddenly that there is a form of assurance you now have in God. You may not be able to explain it, but somehow you know you can't fail. Somehow you know you can't die of sickness. Somehow you know you can, evil cannot happen to you. Because all of those things are possibility in the new realms of life. But it is the ministry of the Holy Ghost that brings you there. Maybe you have not stood in places where you don't qualify. I've been there many times. I've been there many times. The first time I was invited to preach in the redemption camp. Suddenly I just discovered that my revelation is not enough. Ah, what's happening? I've read this Bible very well. I know what I'm preaching. I've seen every day. See, there are places you will go to, the atmosphere will choke you. They wait because of the testimony of God that is there. Your humanity will rise up. I went to the bathroom. They thought I went to ease myself. Holy Ghost, help me. Market. Ruaka. Parusa. Vakata. Barata. And our God was watching. What will I preach here? Lord, let me not make any mistake. Hele me to Akafakuta. Bakate Bakato. After a while. He stood up. He stood up. I felt him stood up. What? A, when I came out of that bathroom, I came like a cherubim. Oh, you will see boldness that cannot be bought. You will see boldness. Mateke Sura. When you are talking, you are talking as if you wrote the Bible. The audacity of the spirit. That's where men like Paul stood. Concerning virgins, I have no commandment from the Lord. But as a man who is found trustworthy, I speak on this matter. How can you talk like that? Except the ancient of days is whispering from your spirit. See, that's why I told you, forget politics. Forget politics. I sat on my own in my house. They called me and said, you have a letter from the office of the president of the RCCG. I said, did I do something wrong? Is there, forgive me, if I, what should I do? They said, don't worry. There's a crusade. We want you to be guest speaker. Are you joking? Who, talk, who spoke to them about me? I have nobody on earth to speak to me, speak for me there. I have nobody. I don't qualify to go there. God's servant, the patriarch, flew all the way to Benin to sit down for me to come and preach. What connection can make it happen? I cannot preach for his grandsons. I don't have the pedigree to preach for his grandson, let alone his sons. To even see his grandsons is a privilege for them to impart me. And all of a sudden, God went to the pinnacle and said, come and preach. 
and God's servant sat down and was listening. There are things you can't do for yourself. That's why you have an advocate. See, when you are going for that, that interview, call on your advocate. When you are in that crisis, call on your advocate. For that court case, call on your advocate. See, men fail. The Bible says, woe unto him that puts his trust in the arm of flesh. I have learned this. The people I trust the most have betrayed me. Places where I serve with all my heart have been betrayed. And if it was in their powers, they would have destroyed me. But God said, no, mercy prevails over judgment. There's one that speaks on your behalf to your generation. So as you begin to engage the Holy Ghost, you will discover that you become more conscious of the life of God. And that life brings victory. That life brings immortality. That life brings you into the realm of God. That's the first thing the Holy Ghost will do for you. He will upgrade you from the realm of death to the realm of life. The same way he quickened Jesus from the dead and brought him back to the realm of the resurrected life. When he does that, then he will enter the second ministry, which is unveiling to you spiritual realities. The Holy Ghost will now make you become aware that all you have is not car. All you have is not the money in your bank. You have much more. For some of you, God, the Holy Ghost will show you that you are a prophet to the nation. And it begins to give you visions of you preaching in stadia across the world. For some of you, God will give you revelation. How that you will prosper and become very great. For some of you, God will give you revelation of how you will become sorted after in your generation. All of those things the Holy Ghost does is to woo you. In fact, when you are a young believer, you will notice that anything you do will work. Have you been there before? The week you gave your heart to Christ, you went somewhere, they say somebody was deaf. You say, open! The ear opens. You now say, wait, though. there's healing in my life. Though. There's healing. He's opening you up that you have something in God that you were not aware of. You go somewhere, they say, they don't have food. You say, don't worry. Before tomorrow, God will do something. As you are reaching your house, they call you. They say, ah, man of God, 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 somebody just came here and blessed us. If I talk, it works. Uh -huh. This thing, I carry something. Though. Okay, if that is the case, let's check more. You now start fasting. You now start praying. What he's doing is to draw you into God. That's how transformation begins. One of my friends is looking at me now laughing. Those days when I baptized him in the Holy Ghost, he will sit down and he will say, rain has not fallen for one week. Oh. Let it rain today. And it will start raining. I asked him two weeks ago and said, that your rainmaker power, do you still have it? He said, Kai, my brother, my brother, my brother, the thing, no day. But we did, we did. We go, we go bring them back. See, the Holy Ghost is showing you this is your reality. By the time you now accept that you have it, he will now bring you to the school of process. And you need to mature to walk in it. But the first thing he will do is that he will open your eyes to see that those things are there. That's the second protocol of transformation. The third protocol of transformation is that he will now begin to renew your mind. Because although you are seeing dimensions of God, but you are still locked into the culture of your father. So you find some believers, they still believe in New Year Festival. They still believe that where we come from, men don't help women. They still believe that where we come from, you know those funny cultures that demons taught our ancestors, they are still working with it. So the Holy Ghost, after showing you your possibilities in God, he will pause it and then begin to renew you. For you to start thinking the Bible. This is why the Bible said, we all with open faces, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. He said, we are changed into that image from glory to glory. By who? By the spirit of the Lord. So the Holy Ghost brings you into the corridor of transformation. In Romans 12, verse 2, he said, be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you will discover that maybe the first three months you gave your heart to Christ, you were seeing visions, you were preaching in crusades, people were healed, you were prophesying, things were happening, you pray for the sick, they are healed. You just sat down, favor was coming to you. You now became convinced that you have something in God. After four years, you won't see those things again. The Holy Ghost begins to show you scripture. When you pray and you are looking for anything, he will send the Bible verse to you. He will send the Bible because he needs you to begin to think Bible first. So that your mind becomes the mind of Christ. All of that is a protocol of transformation. When he is done renewing your mind, then he will enter your body. He will begin to sanctify you. That's when you will now discover. The first week I knew Jesus, there was no rule. 
I pray for the sick, they are healed. Why is it now that the Holy Ghost is troubling me that I must not lie? <laughs> you must taste the fire before you can manifest the glory. Why is it that now, if I'm keeping malice with somebody, the Holy Ghost is so concerned. You are going out to preach. Before now, it was all about so winning. Now you want to go out, the Holy Ghost tell you, how about John? When will you call him and make peace? And you are wondering, why is it so important? What are you doing with matter? The last time she came, you people were, you, you sat in a compromising position. What, 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 what will you do about it? You will stand up. You want to preach. You pray in tongues loud. Your heart is still down. You discover your soul cannot ascend. You say, ah, what's happening? I used to preach with fire. Hello. The people think that you are on fire. No, you are trying to jack yourself up. Nothing is jacking. Like something. You shook yourself. Nothing shook. He is telling you now that he is more interested in your transformation than your manifestation. And so until you stop that fornication, until you stop that lying, until you stop that drunkenness, you will not see anything. Not because your activity is what qualifies you for power. But if you have power with those garbage, you will lose your soul. And what does it profit a man? If he gains the whole world and suffers the loss of his soul. So the Holy Ghost will expose you to the furnace and purge you. So that your services can be accepted unto God. Malachi chapter 3. From verse 3 and 2, he said he shall appear and sit as a refiner, even as a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering unto righteousness. If the Holy Ghost has not brought you to the furnace, it means you have not journeyed in transformation. I know my journeys. There was a time when the Holy Ghost showed me that I was an apostle to the nations. Ha, and I was bold. I said, we will shake this world. Manta. In fact, we will go for vigils. Those days, it's family deliverance. That's all you had. You will dress well to go for family deliverance. The whole family will be waiting for you by 7 p.m. Then you will come in like an apostle. When you come, you, you, they greet you. You, you start checking the rem. You, then the two intercessors that came with you will be praying. You will be talking. Will be talking. After a while, you will stand and you start talking. About the power of God. Somebody will scream and fall down. The moment you see that sign, your tongues will change. Heli kateva. Malakora. Manteki apakata. God sent me here because the deliverance of this family is tonight. For weeping may endure for the night. Joy cometh in the morning. Our light afflictions are but for a moment. They work for us and exceed. Mehele fehisa. You will now go to the Father. Are you feeling something here? Yes, that is God. Mehika. Pakuta. Take that power. You will do family deliverance like you are preaching in a cathedral of 50,000. After a while, if you wake up and you don't read the Bible, the Holy Ghost will keep quiet on you. You will not start wondering, where is the Holy Spirit? He will be quiet. You will shake yourself. No way. He wants you to know God now. And then you will discover that sometimes in a whole year, all he's giving you are verses of scripture. Verses of scripture. And he will insist that you keep studying and chewing. Those are the errors where your appetite will open. Because you need to, beyond the realities that he showed you, be transformed. And then when you start reading, you will now discover he will start judging everything about your life. From your tongue, to your eyes, to your thoughts, to your spending. Everything, he will expose it to the furnace. And if you yield and allow him to purge you, then you know that your transformation is about to come to the final stage. If he begins to purge you, then he brings you to the last phase of transformation, which is mortification. And what it does in mortification is that those appetites, they will remove them from you. It's like a surgical operation. I told you, there was a time that I love Star Lagabea. Mako Parahas. When it's chilled, we used to call it mortuary standard. You carry it and ah, my God. Your evil you will start sweating like the bottle. Makitas. Melakados. There's nothing that can quench your taste until you, you go down with that bottle. Now, if you give me, I can't drink it. It's bitter. So I'm not talking discipline. I'm talking mortification. Something, a surgery has taken place. There was a time when we were custodians of the record of football. They used to call me Skywide. Because Tony, Tommy Smith, which was one of the best analysts on ESPN, when he finished analyzing a match, he said, this is Tommy Smith worldwide. So in the studio where we watch football, because we were custodians of record, they now said, since you can't be worldwide, you are Skywide. And I bought the record of Skywide. Because the way we did it in that hall is that if somebody else topples you in record, they will dethrone you. 
I dethroned a Liverpool fan. They used to call him 50. He was the sky wide. I showed up. When we are talking about matches, we go to 1985. And begin to show you the record of the tournament first. And the head-to-head -head record. And you know, those days there was no internet. So we go to cafe and print and read. I used to have records in my house. We read them for the day of match. So when you are coming, you are coming with record. And when, 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 when the match is about to start, you start quoting some dates. And the things that happen. So a day came, they stood up in the hall and said, from today, they have dethroned 50. Mike, you are now the new Skywide. And I maintained that record until I stopped watching football. You couldn't take it. <laughs> but when, when we came to mortification, the Holy Ghost choked that appetite and killed it. I go to the football match. I sat down. I was dozing off. I lost interest. I go. I'm sleeping. They win. They don't win. It didn't matter anymore. And I check what is going on. Mortification. He's deadening the appetite. He's killing it. Romans chapter 8 verse 13. The Bible told us that as the final ministry of transformation. It said, and Romans 8 13. If we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if we through the spirit mortify the deeds of the flesh, then we shall live. So it's by the spirit the appetites die. See, don't struggle with rules and regulations. They don't work. You already know here that the, the power that keeps you in sin is called the law of the spirit of death. So the law of the spirit of life is what we deliver you. And the way that law works is that it kills the appetite. It is when the Holy Ghost kills the appetite that it can now begin to grow you in the ways of light. And so you start migrating towards transfiguration. But you see, you must first of all be wooed so that you are crucified. That's the ministry of the cross where the Holy Ghost kills in order to make a life. Because if he doesn't carry you through the valley of mortification, all your manifestation will have a harvest for the devil. Because when you manifest, it will be pride. And the devil will have a harvest. You will corrupt the sacred operations of God. So the Holy Ghost will insist that transformation will not end until you carry your cross and follow him. It's mortification. How many of you have experienced these things that I'm sharing? You have experienced where you became more aware of the life of God. You became aware of your calling. You just discovered you are special because of what God is showing you. There are times when for six months, every night you're having visions. Sometimes you're having encounters. Angels will come to your room. What did I do to deserve angelic visitation? You now tell your friends, an angel came yesterday. They'll say, really? All of that is a wooing process. That's why it's been long. You saw one. Now you need to learn the word of God and grow. You're still waiting for the angels. They won't come. They will wait for you to go now. Because they came to invite you. Now you have to go. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. <laughs> I was in the eye called Patmos. And I was in the spirit of the Lord's day. And as I turned, I heard a sound. And the moment he turned, he was in the heavens. He began to see. They come to woo you so that you can go to journey with them. In John 16, 13, he said, I have many things to tell you. But you can't receive it. How be it when the spirit of truth is come? And who is the spirit of truth? John 14, 16. He is the Alos Paracletos. He is the helper. And that word help has seven synonyms. Number one is comforter. That's why sometimes everybody neglects you but you don't feel it. Because the comfort they are supposed to bring to you, the Holy Ghost replaces it. See, this is why a believer becomes like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. They gang up against you. They cut off from you and think you will go into depression. We don't go into depression. Even in Patmos, the island of death, we remain in the spirit. There is a sucker. He ventilates your soul so that nothing can break you. When a Christian doesn't know the Holy Ghost, he will suffer depression. Did you not read what Jesus said? In this world, you will have tribulation. He said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Sometimes people call you to sympathize with you. We see the warfare you are going through. You don't even feel it. Because every vacuum that should have brought loneliness, every vacuum that should have brought fear, the helper filled it up. This is why you need the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, the vicissitude of life is too numerous. You will crash. Your way will be up and down. But the path of the just man, the Bible said it's as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter. Sir, what we preach here is not an act. Ask those who know me, nothing breaks me. I'm like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. There are many things I don't pray about. Because so long as I'm talking to the Holy Ghost, He ventilates my spirit. So the things that should break me, he covers for them. He is my body bearer. That's the ministry of the helper. He succors you from inside. 
in a way that you even you cannot understand. Many things come against you that should break you. But you have a helper. You have a comforter. And then he's also your counselor. That's the meaning of helper. When you come to a place where your pedigree cannot qualify you, then you hear whispers, echoes of eternity. He said when you are in the wrong way, you will hear a voice behind you telling you this is the way to go. Those are echoes. It's available to those who carry the spirit. That's why the Bible said that light is the true light that lighted every man. There is an illumination that comes from our inside. Job said, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secrets of God was upon my tabernacle, he said, by light, I walk through darkness. We are not stranded. We know what to do. There is a precision that the Holy Ghost brings you into. Not because you are smart, not because you are experienced, but because the step of the just man is ordered by the Lord. We, he, he orders our step. It's not given to man that walketh to order his step, but there is a spirit in man the inspiration of the Almighty give him understanding. We know more than our teachers, not because of what we read, but because an ancient spirit dwells on our inside. And what does he do? He cries, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. This is why I cannot err. Sir, I know what to do. The Bible spoke about Jesus that even he knew, he knew what to do. People look at you, they think you'll be confused. Precision. Even the ones you do without thinking are correct because you are manipulated. It's your counselor. He said, when they call you to speak, don't meditate what you will say. Go there. Open your mouth and we feel it. You have a counselor. This is why you need to know the person is the one that whispers to you in the midst of confusion. You can't be confused. And so when you pray, don't pray, oh Lord, I don't want to be confused. No, that's not how to pray. Oh, Father, thank you because I have a counselor. Thank you, Father, because I have one that gives me precision. Thank you, Father. I have direction by the Holy Ghost. I have direction. Is your counselor. There's somebody who advises me. His advice never fails. He never fails. When you are there, 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 when you are there. Thank you for watching. Please kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget to share. Thank you.